to look normal. He's one of the biggest stars in the world. One of the most acclaimed actors of our time. Tonight, Johnny Depp, the man who rarely grants interviews, sits down with me and opens up about his fame. It's the card I drew, so I'll deal with it. That's fine. It doesn't mean it every single moment you have to be sort of okay with it his family well, i don't I... want my kids to experience me as a novelty i want my kids to know me as dad and his famous friends brando had that big an effect on him. he was a wonderful man you know he, he he'd give you anything plus we'll go on a tour of his private office full of personal memorabilia and his paintings it's all ahead on this larry king special johnny Depp. We are sitting here in Johnny Depp's office, an office like none I have ever seen. In fact, later we'll get a chance to explore it a little. He, of course, one of the most celebrated and versatile actors of his generation. He's also a director, producer, accomplished musician. His new movie, Rum Diary, will open October 28th, the only novel ever written by Hunter S. Thompson. We'll talk about that a little later. You don't do many things like this. So uh, why, do you not like to be interviewed or? No, um... I'm just not very good at it, you know. Never have been very good at it. Why not? I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a, I, you know, there's a, there's a strange thing, you know. I'm okay when I'm a character. If I'm playing a character, I can do, you know, virtually anything in front of a camera. But if I'm just me, I, I feel, uh, you know, uh, exposed. And sort of, you know, it, it feels awkward. We won't expose you. Okay. <laughs> do you like being other people? Yeah, I do. I do because I'm fascinated with people. I mean, I'm fascinated. I, I like to watch people, and that's the one um, sort of uh, thing, uh, you know, as an actor in terms of job uh, um, necessity is the, is the ability to be able to watch people, to observe, to be the observer as a journalist, you know, to observe. And um, it's one of my favorite things to sort of pick apart, you know, various traits. Marlon Brando told me that one of the problems is when you get very well known is they're observing you. That becomes So you can't, uh, you're not observing them really. Yeah, exactly. No, that, that becomes the problem. Uh, you, 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 you become the focus of others. Uh, so therefore your, your, um, your ability to observe is tainted. You know, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it changes quite radically. How did you go from guitar to acting? Accident. <laughs> How did it happen? I'd moved to Los Angeles in 1983 and was living here playing, you know, playing music. And um, uh, we did a couple of good gigs, you know, the band and stuff, and we went on the road for a little bit and that was all fine. But I mean, in terms of making a living, it was, it was pretty uh, straight, you know, pretty close to the bone there. So uh, I was filling out job applications for just various like video stores or anywhere, you know, and, and I happened to be with uh, an old buddy of mine, Nicholas Cage, uh, and uh, who was who was you know then coming up the ranks, and he said, you know, why don't you just? Uh, I think you should meet my agent. You should investigate um, acting. You hadn't thought of it today. No, not really, no, no. And so I met his agent. She sent me to read for a part, and um, got a call back, and then they hired me for the gig. You know, that was the first. Nightmare on Elm Street. That was 1984, three or four. Did you like it right away? No. <laughs> it was a job? It was just a gig, you know. I just thought, well, this will get me through, you know, until, uh, you know, the music picks up or whatever, you know. And so I just, I, you know, the first two or three, four films were, to me were just, you know, a lark, you know, just to, to would be able you to make some dough. Would you rather have been a musician? Um, in retrospect, no, you know. In retrospect, no, because it's... It, I suppose had that become my bread and butter, as they say, or, the, you know, the, the, the main gig, I would have probably fallen out of love with it on some level. And, and, I, and I still, to this day, you know, have the, the same love, uh, you know, first love um, feeling for music as I did when I was 12. You know? Do you play? All the time, yeah, constantly, still, yeah. How did you react to getting famous? I'm still reacting, you know. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still sort of dealing with it. I don't think it's anything you ever get used to, you know. I could never, for many years, I could never sort of put my name in the same 
uh, sort of category as the word famous or, or anything like that. And I'd, I, was very, I just found it very uncomfortable. So um, it's weird. It's something like if you, it, I find if you get used to it, then something must be wrong, you know. If you get used to that constant kind of thing, it's, it's, something's got to be wrong. There's got to be still a part of you that, somewhere in there that pines for anonymity. Alan Alda told me once that he doesn't like uh, giving autographs because he feels it demeans the person asking for the autograph. He feels like put him on a lower level. I know Brando didn't like much being photographed. Is it true? You didn't like you don't like being photographed? I suppose, like for example, when you're when you're doing something organized like a photo shoot, essentially, you know, and I I made the a faux pas of you know I I, I, I sh there was a, a piece in Vanity Fair where I should have used the word violated. However, um, you know, in my in my uh, lack of vocabulary in the moment, I used another word which I have uh, you know apologized for radically. But the thing the thing with doing a photo shoot that's sort of an organized thing you feel dumb okay but just get you just get through it but what I find um, still to this day kind of like an attack on the senses is really just being bombarded by paparazzis you know I'll take photographs with kids people you know who want to take photographs with me people who like the movies people who have supported me I'll do that all day all night that's fine but the bombardment, you know, um, of the paparazzi is just, it's, it's like a, it's just what, such a... What do they get out of it? Uh, I, I mean, I, they take your picture, yeah. and then they take it a minute later. It's not any different than a minute before. And it's not any different than the year before. So the year what before, is I, the, what I, do you think it is? I truly don't understand. I think it must be just this kind of, I don't know, it, is, uh, it, it just feels uh, this, like this kind of gluttonous, uh, horrific uh, um, sport. It's like sport. It's like hunting or something. And you Do you like, therefore go out of your way to try to avoid them? Uh, yeah, I try to avoid, you know, any and all, you know, press, of, 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 especially of that nature, you know, just to, yeah, I just, I, so do you go I, I don't want my kids to experience me as a novelty. I want my kids to know me as dad, you know, and already, you know, if they have access to the internet or, or whatever, I mean, they, they, they understand what the deal is. But I don't want them to have to live through and experience that kind of uh, attack, you know. So what do you do when you go out to eat? I don't go out very much, you know. <laughs> I stay at home a lot. Or when you go out to eat, you know, you gotta, it's gotta, it becomes a strategic sort of plan, you know. Uh, Get into the side. Okay, we're going in the back. We're going to we're gonna walk through the slippery kitchen and we're going to go into the private room or, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's a tough way to live. It's, you know, it's, it's, I suppose it's what I, it's the card I drew, so I'll deal with it, that's fine. But, you know, I, it doesn't mean at every single moment you have to be sort of okay with it. it I, I, I certainly am not one of those guys and, and would, you know, can't stand the idea of, you know, one of those guys who, who whines about, you know, um, um, you know oh, how horrible success is and also I'm, I, I do realize and understand very well on a profound level how lucky I am and what a privileged position it is and, and what it's done ultimately for, for, for me, my family and my kids. But at the same time, you know, there, there are moments in, in a man's life when you just kind of want to feel somewhat normal, you know? <laughs> He's one of the biggest stars in the world, but it wasn't always that way. I had been essentially known within the confines of Hollywood as the, you know, as box office poison, you know what I'm saying? You know, basically had built a career on 20 years of failures. Plus later, Johnny shows me the inside of his private office. It's an up close and personal look at a Johnny Depp you will not want to miss when this Larry King special, Johnny Depp, returns.